So the aim of it really is to try and give those external students a, a practical hands-on lab experience in their own home, essentially. And one of the problems we've had running a, a lab methods course is that many of our students are off campus, they're external, and in that context they can't actually come into the lab and handle the material, which is essential in the learning process for this course. So one of the ideas we had was that if we could 3D print the material that we have in the lab and send that out to the students, and what we're going to do is we're going to film the course in the lab. So when we're explaining detail on, the, say, the skull in the lab, it'll be filmed close up. Those students will access that on study desk, and the very same example we're using on the film will be the one they're holding in their hand, the 3D printed model. Well, it's very difficult. I mean, we would have had to have, those external students, the only other option would have been for them to come to USQ for perhaps two weeks for a, an intensive residential. Now, when you think about the cost, say, of replicating this in, in 3D imagery, as opposed to the combined cost of getting 30 students, some of them may come from the Kimberley or Christmas Island and their accommodation and the, the expense that, that it's costing them to actually attend, I think that this makes the 3D printing quite uh, um, feasible in terms of costing. Um, Generally speaking, the larger process that's going on in terms of having uh, teachers uh, exercise uh, creativity and have very low barriers to be able to experiment with ideas, to be able to demonstrate that we think that there will be positive impact of using technology in the learning enterprise or in specific learning courses is incredibly important. Um, and in fact, the barriers to experimentation have, I believe, historically been one of the reasons why certain technologies are not used as creatively as they could be. <clears throat> and certainly, uh, the university's position in terms of actively supporting uh, creativity, innovation, um, poking at the current systems that we use, using different systems, have been historically things that teachers have done a little bit in the dark. That is, out of maybe uh, the expectation that they won't be allowed to do things that they haven't done before, uh, has them doing it in uh, environments that make it much harder to share. I mean, for instance, with this particular experiment or this particular demonstration of how to use 3D printing to be able to improve learning outcomes, um, uh, perhaps decrease costs for students, and so on and so forth, the idea that this can be done in the open and the idea can be exchanged and shared allows opportunities in which this might be able to happen in engineering courses and in other types of courses as well. Uh, it's it's uh, very, very satisfying, I think, obviously. Uh, and it's very satisfying. I think the time has come in some ways. Um, you know, these ideas and these approaches have been, uh, you know, piloted in some of the other places that I, I've been uh, and uh, at, at some other universities, and I've seen an enormous amount of enthusiasm. I think a lot of it does have to do with the individuals who are involved, and it's an opportunity for really um, those teachers who can see benefit and engaging and piloting to step up or to step out and to engage as well, take advantage of it uh, in you know in an environment that's really all about discovery. It's all about what's going to be what's going to be best.